Welcome to our latest episode of Bar In. We are proud to be joined by a couple of uh, Park District alumni. So welcome, Nemo. Welcome, Diana. Welcome to our show. <laughs> uh, just start things off real quick. If you can just give us a quick intro, you know, name, schools you attended, and kind of a brief water polo background just so the kids at home can get a, get a sense of who you guys are. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'll go. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Stephania Lopez, but everyone calls me Nemo. Um, started CP at a young age. I know that I played polo with Kiri when I was like around five. Diana was like six or seven. And then we switched over and went to McGuane. Um, I played for St. Ignatius, and now I play for Connecticut College. I'm so cute. Um, I'm Diana. I just graduated from Siena and I started off polo uh, like Nemo said. We started, oh well, actually I started at Harrison for like mm -hmm. two years and then I switched over to, to Curie and then we went to McGuane. But yeah, we grew up playing. All, our siblings played against each other and they're still friends and we're still friends. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Can you no, guys we, describe a little bit? Oh, go ahead, Luke. Go ahead. Well, no, it's it's the the family. I think the family issue, the background thing, is is important too to know that you know you guys come from, uh, you know, your older siblings played water polo yeah. as well. Um, how did that? Yeah, how like, was that like? You know, like did they they kind of pressure you to do it, or was it more like, well, your older brothers and sisters are doing it, so you guys have to do it? How did that go, turn about? I got thrown in because of my siblings, so it's, it's, it, w it would, I'm pretty sure most park district school or uh, pools did it where they had the swim portion first, mm -hmm. like swim practice would be first, and then they'd have water polo like later that night, and um, they kind of just threw us in. I know I was always swimming, and then they'd just be like, oh, you should stay, and then I remember when we were little, we would always just like mess around it was never like an actual practice I think me and Nemo and like the rest of us like our friends we would just like mess around Hang the corner. Not really have like practice <laughs> yeah. we'd like go play hide and seek I know in Whitney we would go like sneak into the gyms and play hide and seek <laughs> and like tag never like I think we had like an hour break between practice so we would just go goof around it was never like we weren't actually there for practice more so than to like hang out our siblings though were on it they were a little older they were more into water polo at that time yeah i remember being at kiri and watching sebastian play with arturo diana's brother um and like just watching them made us want to like get in the water and like play and i remember bugging martin all the time to let us in and he's like girls like you're too young like they're all older than you but finally like we convinced him so were we good? No, but um, <laughs> they let us do whatever we wanted, though. Like, so it was nice. Yeah. Like, we'd, they, they, and they weren't mean or they wouldn't bully us. They'd kind of honestly, we would just goof around with them. They would like throw us off their shoulders. They'd let us like drown them. It was fun. <laughs> it was nice being the little younger siblings that we on. I like. Can you guys give a shout out to some of the younger coaches that, or the the coaches that you guys had when you were younger and how they kind of molded you like those little Harrison Park, McGuane, Curie coaches? Yeah. So I started what, off Like which Juan. ones do you really remember? Juan. He was the one that like taught me how to, I have vivid, vivid uh, stories about how he would like drag me into the pool when I was like in Tiny Tots. I was like three and I would like hold on to the, the bars on the Harrison door. I know you guys all know like the metal like uh, hinges on there and I would just hold on to there and I like who would pry me off and throw me in. I think he was the one that for sure got me to like water polo because I did uh, I did a few few years with him. Yeah. Um, I remember doing Tiny Tots at Kiri and Federico was actually my coach. Um, and he would like throw me in the water and like knew that I was going to be good eventually. And he so he would talk to my mom about it. But Martin was like my first um, polo coach that I had and I remember like he really um, kind of just threw me in there and was like yeah he just taught me everything really like Martin was like my first coach so yeah I agree Martin kind of was the one to really shape us into legitimate playing water polo players like we 
kind of got all our skills so like aside from like we learned how to swim that was like done with we learned how to kind of like uh more master how to maybe float and and do all that (laughs) and then we got into water polo with him like with the skills and the shooting and what we had to do all the rules he really I think he was really responsible for shaping us into kind of maneuvering into wanting to play polo more seriously yeah can you can you guys describe like something that he kind of instilled in you guys that you kind of kind of always carried through your playing days throughout high school throughout college yeah I remember there was one thing that Martin told us um about how the game I I feel like people say that like there's been coaches that like say this but um that it's like 80 percent mental and 20 percent physical and so um a lot of the times like I know when I was younger I'd get frustrated um and I was a little bit of a hothead um and then Martin kind of told us like you know a lot of the a lot of the time like the game is a lot more mental than it is physical so like being able to control your mindset during um high pressure situations not letting your emotions get get over um everything and like controlling how you play like I think that was like the biggest thing that I took away from him and um kind of used throughout like the years I mean, I think he was just, I I totally agree. I also just think he was, I'm so sorry. He was just like such an aggressive coach. Like, I think he was our first coach that really just never held back, even though we were super young. Like he never um, sort of backed off from wanting to like, he never uh, laid off on having to yell at us. He knew we could take it and that was something that was really big in making sure that we would develop as strong emotional players because I mean like Nemo said it's a mental game we can't let our emotions get the best of us but he really helped us kind of understand that he's yelling at us he's uh uh, saying the things that he has to say to us because it's going to benefit us in the long run what what I liked about Martin too was that he didn't treat the girls any different than the guys you know like he, I remember, um, he would, like, pit me against Oscar, and he would, like, <laughs> yell at me. He'd be like, why are, you, why are you letting him push you around? Like, do something about it. And there was one time where, like, I literally could, this was when um, Oscar was, like, 15, I was 14. So, like, he's starting to, like, you know, mature and go through puberty and obviously was a lot stronger. But um, he, there was one point where he was like, you're not doing anything, get out of the water. He was like, get out. And I was like, I'm trying. But yeah, that's what I, I agree. I, I appreciated the fact that like Martin treated us the same like everyone else, you know, like he pushed us really hard, but he knew it was because we were able to take in like, you know, we were, yeah, so. Yeah, so um, that's great. Two it, questions for you guys. Oh, go ahead, Luke. <laughs> so. <laughs> The one, the one, one question. The one question I have is um, just kind of pick, picking back off of learning how to be mentally tough, um, especially at a young age. Uh, the big games, obviously, in, in the local park league during your time period, was the big Harrison McGuane uh, rivalry, where there was ten and under, twelve and under, fourteen and under. You know that that was a big part of it. How did? the lessons that Martin taught you guys in practice about being mentally tough, about giving it your all and not holding back. How did that prepare you for games like that, especially when you're 10, 11, 12, 13 years old? You know, did that make a difference? Did that help? Did that hinder? Oh, absolutely. Um, I think one, I, I know you remember this, Nemo, but one game that is like ingrained in my memory forever is that uh, I forgot what year it was, but it was definitely co-ed still. And it was me, Nemo. I know Oscar was on our team. I'm pretty sure Robert was still on our team. And maybe Hedo. And we had a few other girls. And we were up against, like, Harrison, Shane. They had, like, a bunch of, like, big yeah. boys. that were Mario. Do you remember Mario? Mario. Yeah, lefty. Yeah, lefty. It was, <laughs> that, was an, that was probably our most intense co-ed year. Because me and Nemo knew that we were going to play the whole game. And we're like, okay, well, we got to go against these boys. We can't. And that just goes to show how Martin really was just like, it's the same thing. It's you're playing against 
players that are the same level as you, you should not be intimidated. Um, and I know he definitely focused on us as like girls, young girls to prepare us for these co-ed games because it can get physical. Yeah. I'm almost positive someone like got a bloody something that, that game and we had to like stop. Something went wrong. With, like, yeah, oh, Julie got I remember him. Mario hit Julie in the face. <laughs> but um, but yeah, wow, no, I mean, that game was like reckless. Remember that? Wow. There was a bunch of things that went on in that game, but uh, that was probably the most memorable. Be- memorable because that was high intensity. We were co-ed, and it was like Quan and Martin pinned against each other against these uh this variety of really talented uh Park District kids. And yeah. we're all friends. It's not like we hated each other, but we knew that in that game, we're not friends. We're here to play. We're here to win. And, uh, I mean, it was a really good game. I don't know if you guys were there, but that was one of my favorite games to, to be involved in. And it was I, a million years yeah. ago. I just remember, like, parents would get really into it, too. Like, they would yell. They would yell at the refs, <laughs> the kids. But, like, it's crazy because like the stands are super like crowded everyone's yelling it's a lot of pressure for like looking back on it that's a lot of pressure for like 10 year olds 12 year olds but um I don't know I think Martin did a really good job at kind of making us more focused on like the end goal which is like to win and not worry so much about like everything that's going around us and if something wasn't called in our favor anything like that like I feel like he, he just did a really good job at grounding us and making us not, like I said before, like get into our emotions and things like that. But yeah, I'm, it's it's wild kind of looking back on that and like thinking about all the things that like we went through as like kids. Not that it was a bad thing, but it was just a lot of pressure. <laughs> no, um, but he also was really, really just good at handling yeah. like like you said, he he would make us focus on the game and he would handle anything that the refs were doing. He would take all the heat. He would get red carded. He didn't care. He just made us sh- uh, be aware that he was taking care of his part as a coach and we just mm-hmm. had to take care of what was going on in the water. Yeah. The two questions I had for you guys were, uh, how do you think that mental like toughness, that mental grit, transferred from out of the pool right that you learned with martin mcguane and playing through the parks into your everyday life and then the second part question was a little bit more of a fun question do you remember like a boy that was a rival to you uh at practice <laughs> or that you had to just somehow beat all the time um go ahead yeah, Diana. So, so the first question so i mean i know with water polo just the kind of more broadening it just the fact of playing a sport at a more high intensity level I played a bunch of sports growing up and I narrowed it down once I got to high school to just swimming and water polo because I knew that that was something I wanted to keep doing maybe pursue even farther but I did just focus on water polo because I thought okay well let's we're getting older we can start narrowing it down and not everyone's going to play three sports not even two sports so I remember I wanted to be able to kind of figure out how to manage my schedule better, especially going to Ignatius. It's, it's a hard school. It's a hard schedule. Practices are, are long. And then having swim season and then water polo season. So I kind of looked at it as water polo having the effect of kind of making sure that I would manage my time the best way I can. And then that would eventually lead to me having kind of a set thing of a routine when I'm like out in the real world I know that helped me a lot in figuring out how to schedule my college conflicts and then of course now that college is over how to uh, make sure that a schedule and a set routine is implemented to how my like everyday life is yeah um for me what I learned a lot from mine was like discipline but also like I mentioned before him putting us against like um guys and like people that were like older than us gave me a lot of confidence that then um so I'm I'm interested in physician assistant studies and I'm like majoring in um neuroscience so it's like a lot of STEM courses and there's like this stigma around like women in STEM and how like you know we're not capable of doing the same things and stuff like that so I'm so appreciative of like the sport and like the lessons I've learned um, as, as a you know young um, girl and 
I feel like that has transferred a lot into like the profession that I want to pursue and like my experiences in STEM courses through high school and college. And then to go off of like the second question, was that like, who, who is our biggest rival? Boy rival that you can think of. Yeah. Mine's Shane. But it was a boy yeah. rival. Yeah. The Shane Hughes. Shout out <laughs> Shane. I don't know what you're doing right now, but he, we would just go at it at practice. We'd go uh, talking smack to each other, but we were best friends outside of the pool. But yeah, I mean, oh, me and him, no, no, no. That's we funny. Would always That's just funny. Go at it. Um, and, I, I and I'm me, willing to bet you beat oh. him the majority of times, right? He, I mean, I would give it to him. He's a long oh, boy. Come on. Of course. <laughs> Thank you, Nemo. Of like, course. I, I could definitely handle him in like a wrestling match. Like, he was, he was. <laughs> crafty player though i'll give him that you, he you was, and shane yeah. definitely he did have like, some really good battles super yeah sneaky, super <laughs> sneaky super strong arm for such a little <laughs> boy at the time. Just wrap his but, body um, around like <laughs> such a talented guy i'm so glad he kept playing in college and i mean he did he, he played all four years we would occasionally message each other just congratulating each other in the season i know he um, he felt really bad that I couldn't finish my season this year, but I did congratulate him when he finished in the fall of uh, this past year. And yeah. So. <laughs> I think Shane was all of our rivals, low key. He would always like talk in the Any guys, any coach. <laughs> but um, I think I think for me, my biggest one was probably Oscar because we grew up like we started swimming together in the same lane. Um, and like Martin would train both of us like together. So I think he was like probably my biggest rival. We'd always like talk trash to each other. So <laughs> I 